hey, good morning, and thank you for joining us. I'm Nui Smith, and welcome to my backyard here in my home. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we're still able to meet this way through the means of technology, Lord God. And I just pray, Father, that during this time that your words will flow out of me. Be with us, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. We tend to be living in a little uncertainty right now. We're trying to figure out how things are going to work. You know, there's talks about reopening things. Should we reopen? Should we not reopen? What can we reopen? You know, who's being quarantined? Who's not being quarantined? Who's avoiding quarantine? And so we live in such a time where things to be kind of seems to be a little uncertain. And the one thing that's been kind of laying on my heart right now is that we're looking more at a situation than we are looking at God. And we need to be reminded just a little bit of who our God is. Elevation Worship came out with a song a couple months ago called The Blessing. And it's been getting more and more popular during this time. In fact, 65 churches in the UK did a Zoom call choir and they sang that song together. You need to go check that out on YouTube if you have the chance to. But it speaks so much about who our God is and everything about it and also what he does for us. And I think we need to be reminded of that. In one part of the song, it says, May his favor be upon you in a thousand generation, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. We have a God who is not just a God of one generation, but he is a God of multiple generations. And not only that, but he keeps his promises for a thousand generations. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9 says, Understand, therefore, the Lord your God is indeed God. He is faithful. He is a faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generation and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commandments. In Psalms 105, he says, He will always stand. He always stands by his covenant, the commitment he made to a thousand generations. Psalms 103 verses 17 and 18 says, But the love of the Lord remains forever for those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children, of those who are faithful to his covenant and those who obey his commandments. He is not just the God of yesterday and today. He's the God of the future as well. He keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. <laughs> that means after you and I are gone, his promises and his love will continue on. He isn't just a God of a generation, but he is a God of generations. We need to pray. We really need to pray more like we're not just praying for our generation, but for future generations as well. Because he'll be there even when we're not. He knows how far our family will go. He's a God of a thousand He's a God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. The next part of the song says, May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He's with you. He is with you. In the Old Testament, Moses had led the Israelites for many, many, many years. And next thing you know, his time had come up. God told him, you're not going to enter in the promised land. And so now the leadership of Israel went from Moses to Joshua. Now there's a little bit of uncertainty that happened during that time because, let's face it, Moses was in charge for so long that a lot of times when that begins to happen, you get so used to normal. Moses was normal. They knew what to expect with Moses, everything else like that. Moses had led them through everything. And now Moses is gone. And now everything falls to Joshua. We find ourselves in a little situation, might not be like a leadership trans transition, but we are dealing with a new normal. This is normal. Not meeting face to face anymore is normal. And a lot of us can't wait to go back to normal. But let's get one thing straight. There's most likely going to be a new normal. Things would definitely not be the same. And this is what Moses said, this is what happened with Moses in Deuteronomy 31, verse 7. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with these people into the land the Lord swore to you, their ancestors, to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. 
verse 8. The Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. We can get so caught up as being stuck in what we're not used to that we forget that God is always there. We forget that he's the one who has never left. His presence goes before us and behind us and beside us, all around us. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23-24, it says, Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord? Do I not feel the heavens and the earth? During times of uncertainty, God is still the same. He has never changed. That's who he is. In Romans 8, starting at verse 31 and going to verse 39, it says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. He, excuse me, <laughs> he did not spare his own son. Um, go back to verse 32, sorry. He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Is it... It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for, for your sake we face death all day long and we're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor demon, nor present, nor future, nor any powers, neither height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. I don't have to fear because my God is with me. He surrounds me at all times. His presence fills the earth. And if God is for me, who can be against me? I don't have to worry about everything that is going on because he has everything in control. In the morning, I'm sorry, the next part of the song says, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, he is for you. He is for you. Isaiah 43, starting in verse 1, it says, But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he formed you, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Psalms 39, 5 through 12 says, You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me and great for me to understand. Think about that for a minute. God goes before us. He places his hand on our heads. Like a parent got a little kid along the way. I can never escape from your spirit and I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest ocean, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light to come around to become, and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Ezekiel 36, 9 says, For behold, I am for you and I will turn to you. You will be cultivated and sown. God will come to us. He will take us and he will plant us deep and he will grow 
because he keeps his hand upon us. I will not fear the situation that I'm in, but I will trust in the one who sees the beginning from the end. Nothing can keep me out of his sight. He, he sees me in my lowest and he will lift me up to my highest. Through every trial and tribulation, he walks beside me, for I am not alone. We have a God who keeps his promises for a thousand generations. We have a God who goes before us, who is all around us. And he's beside us at every time. He guides us through everything. And we have a God that in the good times, in the bad times, in our when we're weeping or rejoicing, he is for us. We don't have to look at the situation that we're in right now and be captivated and so overwhelmed by it. But we just have to remember one thing. We have a God who loves us and we have a God who cares for us. The chorus of this song is so simple, yet it's so powerful. It's just, amen. So be it. So be it, Lord. May your presence go before us. May your May you be there in my, you are there in my morning and in my dancing. You are there when I wake up. You're there when I go to sleep. You're there in my lowest and in my highest. You're there in this confusion time and you are there. You have never left. And Lord, I know one thing for sure that you will be there even after I'm gone. I know the generations are in good hands because they are in your hands. The beginning of the song comes straight out of Numbers chapter 6, starting at verse 22 and going to verse 27. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Numbers chapter 6, verses 27, the Lord told the Lord said to Moses to tell Aaron, so they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them by saying this blessing. Folks, we carry the name of the Lord with us. We're Christians. We're little, which means little Christ. He has put his names upon us. He blesses us. He keeps us. His face shines upon us and he is gracious to us. And when he turns his face towards us, he gives us peace. I pray right now during this time that you have peace during this situation and you remember who your God is, that he is a God of a thousand generations. His promise will last way beyond us. We don't have to fear anything that's going on. We don't have to be so concerned about all this stuff going on because he is a God who will always be there. He is a God who sees the beginning from the end. He is a God who walks beside us. He guides us just like a dad a good, a good parent does for their children, guides them along. He's never left. He has never left us. He has never forsaken us. But he is always there. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are always there, that you are always with us, and you surround us with your love and your kindness, Lord. And Father, I just pray that during this time, during this corona situation, Father, you know what's going on. You know everything that's going on. So, Lord, I just pray that you have your way. You do the impossible. And Lord, right now, for those who are feeling lonely, those who are feeling stressed out, those who are feeling, I just pray, Lord, that you wrap your arms around them and you give them peace. Touch them, Father. Be with them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face upon you and give you peace. God bless.